at the Cerulean Gym at 4.30 p.m. a Euro. Misty was finally locking up after another day of gym battling. She sighed and thought the battle was both boring and frustrating. Boring that the fact that another trainer tried to use type advantage and failed to understand of adapting and frustrating as a trainer's used Pokemon that are overpowered and yet to grasp how strong they really are. Plus the frustration comes in terms of once more guys asking her out. She doesn't mind whenever a man would ask her out but knowing how they were ogling her it made her a bit uncomfortable. Now granted that is known as the mermaid tomboy, she did once a upon a time wanted to have a romantic night out with someone. However, it wasn't the case when you dress up as a guy and have your red-orange hair on your side. Who knew that puberty would change that in her life as she grew tall, reaching into 5 feet 6, thanks to her legs that she inherited from her mother. In fact, some of the locals at Cerulean City would say she inherited almost all of her mother's traits. Long legs, fair skin, and shoulder-length hair, and her face being well-angled. Yes a blessing of how she looks as she did dated some, but a curse as they wanted more from her. She stopped wearing those shorts shorts and yellow top shirt. She opted more into a light blue long sleeved shirt reaching right at her belly button, with blue jeans that was well enough to show some of her strong legs. In some way sending a message, yes I am a girl but respect me. As she finished closing those doors, she at the moment thought of taking a hot shower to calm her nerves. As she made it to her personal shower stall, she began to glance at the familiar sun that is reaching slightly lower in her window, as she began to remember how this particular time is when her life changed. She was at Route 1, fishing for a Pokemon that will be in use for battle. What she never expected was to fish out a young boy. She was surprised with him carrying an injured Pikachu as then he stole her bike. She pondered why he was on the run and went after him as fast as she could. As she ran, a rainstorm just appeared almost out of nowhere, she still ran as lightning hit the ground at least a mile where she stood. She stopped running and decided to wait until the storm cleared out. As the storm cleared out, she ran up that mile when she stopped at the moment. She didn't believe what she saw in her eyes. A number of Spiro were left nearly burnt from their bodies. They are breathing though, but nonetheless, pondered it was the lighting that hit them hard. She did looked closer and found Pikachu out cold, and looked further down and found the young boy. She found him not breathing or moving. She checked on his pulse and it was weak. Thankfully she found another trainer walking by and asked for help. What occurred in that time of the sun barely setting, she could all but think about the boy what was out. This sat in her over how her parents were worried, and what became the worst part would be that he ended up in a coma. His parents were thankful for finding their son and was able to buy a new bike for her, considering that the one she had was fried to pieces. She began to visit him whenever she could and when she met Gary Oak, a friend of Ash, he told her everything that he knew about him. She held a soft spot on the young boy, like a brother that she wished she had. Someone that is so kind to Pokemon and determined to be the best and learning that his journey just barely began. She kept battling trainers in her gym and called up the hospital in no change, except for that one time that he nearly died when they tried to resuscitate him. She was relieved he was alive but in a coma. She began to pray for Arceus each night and hope that something will change. After three years, her gym began to go through renovations, as times are of change. She contacted the league to hold of any challengers for a near year to face against the Elite Four. They were able to find a temporary replacement and she began her own journey. It was an easy journey, facing all of the gym leaders. It tested her as a water trainer, and was willing to go all the way. Her own dreams is to become an elite 4 member specializing in water types only. She proved herself easily with Brock, her toughest time was with, Erica put up a great fight, Sabrina tested her patience, Janine pushed her a bit more, Blaine fought hard, and lastly Ariana. After defeating them, she barely won the tournament and faced the Elite Four. She had a tough round against Will, barely survived Koga, Bruno nearly beat her and got lucky with knocking out his Machamp. She did lose to Karen's Gengar, thus ending her journey. She was saddened, but Lance applauded and praised her for her efforts and told her if one of them was ready to leave their spot, they she will be the first to be in the Elite Four. 
She hoped when that moment will come one day. She returned home as some of the locals earned her respect. She kept her elite Pokemon on the side just in case, as her gym Pokemon was used in public. Over time she pondered what happened to the young boy and wanted to call up the hospital tonight. As she finished showering and putting on an overly sized blue shirt and shorts, she took out a bottle of juice. As she was drinking it, a call came from her video phone. She sighed and wanted to hope it was important. She answered the phone and said, Cerulean Jim, this is Misty speaking. On the other side of the phone line, Ash was surprised to see Misty. This couldn't be the same Misty that he saw five years ago, this was a beautiful woman. His heart was thumping and couldn't understand what was going on with him, he never seen her with her hair down except those few times in his coma. He was trying to stay focused in hand and replied, E.H. Hey Misty. It's me Ash. Ash Ketchum, from the person who stole your bike. Misty thought for a moment and nearly dropped the phone and replied, Oh my Arceus, you're awake. Smiling through the phone, how are you, Ash? Ash smiled himself and blushed slightly, I'm all good, walking and enjoying life. Walking, how long have you been awake? About a year now, he can't understand what was going on as his hands were sweating a little. Maybe his dad could check on him later on. Wow, glad that you're walking again. She found his blushing a bit cute, so childlike. Well not only that, but also I am letting you know that I am starting my journey again tomorrow. She was surprised on hearing this as this was something she didn't expect it. Wait, you're going to start again. Isn't it dangerous for you after what happened? Ash took a deep breath and countered, I have to face my fears sooner or later. I have to go through this journey Misty. I want to prove myself to be the best. Please understand, I am going a little crazy just sitting around and hoping that things will be given to me in a silver platter. I need to do this, Misty. The young woman understood what it was like being in his position, it could be nerve-wracking with the same position and not growing. The journey she took made her more patient and mature as a gym leader. You're right Ash, I must say though it will be dangerous facing people out there. Why is that? Isn't it always the danger we face all of the time? Questioned Ash. You see Ash, trainers are using something called synthetic in their Pokemon. Ash now was curious about this, what is synthetic? Synthetic is a drug used to increase the strength of a Pokemon making them stronger. At first, it brought more challenge for the gym leaders and trainers alike. That is until Lance found out about what the side effects of the drug does. It has been in debate with the league itself to illegalize it, but a certain party wanted to keep it as to make them pumped up. By doing so, fights are fixed and gym leaders sometimes have to allow them to fight us. I have so far faced a few of these guys with only my gym Pokemon. I strategize and beat them, as long of others. We are getting tired of it. Hearing her anger rising slightly, he sadly said, sorry to hear that. I won't do that to my Pokemon. I know you want. Just battle us with what you got. Thankfully, Lance allowed us to use our own Pokemon to battle anyone using synthetics. People are tired of watching synthetic fights as that is what he have each time. I would rather challenge my brain more than facing a brute force fighter. Understandable. I will fight you fairly with everything I got. He smirked. Oh I know you will. Make sure you do, or else Euro, she coyly replied. Ash pondered what else to say and said, listen, I owe you a bike, so when I reach. Don't worry about it, your dad paid for it. Ash was surprised about it, oh. Well then, I will see you when I arrive there. She nodded and yawned for a moment. You seem a bit tired. I will let you rest. Alrighty Ash, hope to see you soon. The young man nodded and said their goodbyes. As they hung up, Ash enjoyed talking to her. So different from her coma, much nicer and more determined. And he liked seeing her hot-tempered at time as a euro. Why did he thought about that? He shrugged and decided another time to talk about. He decided to eat dinner and rest up. The next morning in Pallet Town a euro. Ash was tying his shoelace and was finished. He looked in the mirror for his new look. He had a black shirt with a blue jacket on without the white shoulder cloth and instead was black. Wearing blue jeans, black and blue shoes along with his league hat. 
He placed his five pokeballs in his side of the belt. Placing his backpack containing on the right side his hookshot and his collapsible baton on his left side of the backpack. He was ready to face the world. Come on Pikachu. Pika. As he walked downstairs his parents were waiting for him at the dining table. They were eating breakfast as Giovanni said. Good morning son, have some breakfast before you go. He nodded and began to eat quietly his pancakes, eggs and sausages. As they were silent at the table, all of Ash could think of what to expect and face. He must be ready to take on against those trainers with synthetics. That means more training and time to do so. He knew he had no time limit. He must do his best. As they finished their meals, the young trainer noticed his mother's was in a verge of tears. He hugged and told her, I will be careful this time. I know, but just call us when you reach to Viridian City. I promise. His father had no more words to say and patted his shoulder. He stepped out of the house and said, see you guys later. He walked on the patch road and began his journey to be the best. Route 1. The sun was reaching near the, the top of the sky, as Rattatas, Pidgeys, and other Pokemon are frolicking peacefully. Nothing of worry occurs as they eat and enjoy the beautiful day. That is until they saw some of the tall grass were being moved slightly. They began to sense something is coming out of there and they scurried away. That is when a Spearow was making trying to make a run for it. Quick attack, Pikachu. Don't let him get away. Shouted Ash. Pika. The mouse Pokemon moved very quickly and before the bird had a chance to fly off, he was hit hard on the side and fell off on the ground. Spearow shook a bit and hissed at the Pikachu. He knew he had to fight back, lest this chase would go on. All right Pikachu, we have him right where we want him. Use Iron Tail. Pika. The yellow mouse ran right at him. As the bird growled to intimidate the mouse Pokemon, Pikachu managed to successfully hit Spearow on the side. The Pokemon was losing conscience as he felt a hit on the side, knowing that he was going to be captured, hoped that the person would not be horrible or cruel. Ash waited until the ball was shaking once, then twice, then the third time, until it finally stopped and the dim of the red light that was glowing earlier stopped. For Ash this was a big deal for him, sure he caught Pokemon in the dream world, but this was different. Reality felt great and he went up to it and raised it high. Yes, I caught my first Pokemon. Ash exclaimed. Pikachu felt happy that he did something right for his friend. Ash then hugged Pikachu and felt if that is one way to redeem itself from the journey years back. Finally facing the fear of those Spearows finally catching one, felt all of the weight off. Ash decided to take him out a bit to heal him up. After the bird Pokemon was healed, he became curious about the Spearows. He took out his Pokédex and scanned him. Name. Spearow. Gender. Male. Creature type. Tiny bird Pokemon. Summary. Very protective of its territory, it flaps its short wings busily to dart around at high speed. Moves. Peck, growl, and leer. Ash smiled softly and began to pet the bird Pokemon. Surprised by the gesture and comfort, the Pokemon crooned from the touch and could trust this trainer. Welcome to the Team Spearow. I am Ash Ketchum, and I am going on this journey to be the best along with more Pokemon that I will capture and I wanted to see if you wanted to grow strong with me. The bird of course nodded and was ready to be the best along with his new companion, Pikachu. All right then, let's look around for more Pokemon to make you guys strong. As they were walking through some of the tall grass, they managed to find some trees around the area. Ash smirked as he saw something that could help him. A monkey with a pig snout was enjoying eating berries. No worries at all from anyone. A Menke, perfect. Ready to fight Spiro. The bird was ready. Go with him with a peck attack. Unaware what will happen to Menke, she was hit hard by a bird. The Spiro began to peck him, which then lead the Pokemon to look around for the annoyance. Good work Spiro, now Leer. The Pokemon glared at Menke. The monkey flinched slightly, but then began to attack Spiro with a scratch attack. Spiro shook off from the attack and was ready for more fighting. Give it another peck attack. Spiro gave another painful peck at the side of the face of Mankey. The fighting Pokemon was losing conscious and was almost out of the fight. 
She then felt something hit on his side, knowing he was going to get caught. Ash watched as the Pokeball was struggling. He hoped he can catch her, he had a primy at his world and hoped that this would be equally tough. He waited after few shakes until it was finally caught. Ash once more picked it up and gestured Spiro to come toward him. Good job, Spiro. Ash smiled. The bird Pokemon nipped Ash on the ear affectionately and was returned to his Pokeball. Pikachu saw the fight and was impressed how fast Ash was catching Pokemon. He knew his friend had it in the bag. Ash took out Mankey to heal him and took out his Pokedex to see what he knows. Name, Mankey. Gender, female. Creature type, pig monkey. Summary, it's unsafe to approach if it gets violently enraged for no reason and can't distinguish from friends and foes. Moves, scratch and leer. He petted the Pokemon as she began to enjoy it. Sure she was angry to fight, but she did not expect it to be caught at all. She saw he was a determined person to be the best by having the advantage at all costs. She was then returned. Ash then left the tree area and went toward road again. He felt happy that he caught two Pokemon. He knew that by training them right, they will be the best in the world. Once he reached toward Viridian City, he would allow his Pokemon to be checked on and rested. After that, he will continue his training. Thus far the road was calm as he finally saw the city itself and he checked the time. 1.10 PM, he smirked to himself. He had a good pace of walking and had three Pokemon with him. As he reached near the city more however, things began to look a little bleak. He saw a man, wearing tattered clothing sleeping on the side of the building, hugging his bottle. Not far off, in another building, he saw a man slipping his Pokedex and was handed a yellow liquid small flask. He kept walking a little fast, as he felt a little awkward at his surroundings. He then noticed not far off, a police officer trying to stop two people from continuing from Fiatung. Hey knock it off, shouted the officer. Uncount to her, another man had a dark intention as he took out a needle filled with a clear liquid. Ash was known not to allow stuff like this to happen. Took out his baton and told Pikachu to help out the officer. As the man was about to puncture her with the needle, he was hit hard on his wrist. A crutch was heard and the man was on his knees, yelped in pain from the shot. Then he felt another hit across his temple and was knocked unconscious. One of the guys was hit with an iron tail on the side of the man, as the officer managed to finally arrest the other man in the fight. All three were apprehended. As Ash whistled for his Pikachu to return to his side, he realized who the officer was. It was Officer Jenny. He recognized her from her hair and surprisingly youthful look, except for the uniform itself. Instead of the skirt that she wore in his coma, she wore blue dicky pants with a yellow stripe on the side. Yet he for some reason felt the same thing that he felt when he saw Misty. He began to admire how she looked and shook his head from some of these unknown thoughts. He doesn't understand what was wrong with him. Sure she was attractive, but felt awkward about it. Suddenly Jenny came up to the young man and smiled, thanks for the help. He nodded and replied, so how are you, Officer Jenny? She was surprised how he knew her as if it they knew each other, until she looked at him closely. That is when she realized who he was, Oh Ash, sorry I didn't recognize you. It has been six years ago since I moved here. How are you and your family? The family is good and I'm starting my Pokemon journey. The police were arriving as they began to take the criminals away. You seem a bit too old to start. I was in a Kama Euro. Oh I see. I'm glad that you're up and looking great. Ash flushed on his compliment, thanks, so do you. She smiled softly and said, how about I give you a lift to the Pokemon Center? As I can imagine you are heading there. He nodded as he got into her motorbike. He held on to her and off the went. As he was holding her close, he enjoyed being with a girl this close. Again those thoughts, he would ask his father what is going on with him. She was the officer in Pallet Town, until she was transferred in Viridian City to help out there. He was admired Jenny for answering his questions and learning from her. Finally reaching the center, Jenny said, if you need anything Ash, here is my number. She handed him her card, see ya Ash. She winked and left him. He pocketed the card and went inside of the center. 
In it was a familiar pink-haired young woman, he went up to her and said, Excuse me, Nurse Joy. I was wondering if you can take care of my Pokemon. Nurse Joy nodded and was taking care of his Pokemon. As that was happening, Nurse Joy said, How are you Ash? Ash smiled and replied, I'm all good, Nurse Joy. Thanks for helping me with my therapy. You're welcome. So you're enjoying your journey so far. He nodded. Suddenly the beeping went off and she went to pick up his Pokemon. After that, she said, Don't forget to pick up some supplies in the market. You might need it. I want, and thanks again. He couldn't find another other way to thank Nurse Joy. Even though she specializes in Pokemon, but surprisingly she does human therapy on the side. He knew her even before that when he was just eight and as usual was the nurse he saw for his checkups. He hopes that she becomes a doctor one day. As he was about to leave, he called up at his home as he sat on a bench outside of the center. He waited until it was his mom picked up the call. Ketchum residence. Hey mom, it's me Ash. Oh hey sweetie, how are you? I'm fine, I'm at Viridian City. I caught two Pokemon. Congratulations. Just make sure you do your best and rest up as much as you can. I won't mom. And also don't forget to change your underwear. Ash flushed and replied, Mom. Just making sure you do Ash. Mom, I know I was going to ask this to dad, but I wanted to ask you for some help. Sure what is it sweetie? He took a deep breath and replied, Mom, when I spoke to Misty my heart began to thump fast and my stomach did some flips. Then the same thing with Officer Jenny and Nurse Joy. Why is that? She understood what he was talking about and replied, You're going into puberty Ash. Puberty. Yes Ash, you are growing up. You're seeing women differently. You are seeing them attractive. It is normal Ash. Don't be frightened to go out with a girl, but you must know them first Ash. He nodded and maybe he might ask his father for some advice. Well that is all I have for now mom, I have to go now. I'll talk to dad. Alright then, take care now. He hung up the phone and called his dad and hoped that he had a bit of time to talk. He called at his father's cell number. He waited until he heard the other line. This is Giovanni speaking. Hey dad, it's Ash. Hey son, how's your journey? Asked his father warmly. I'm doing good dad. Do you have time to talk? Sure, what is it? Dad, I am starting to feel strange whenever I am near women. My heart is beating fast and such. It isn't just a crush, but something else. He heard a sigh on the other line and replied, Well son, you are growing to be a man. Do you find them very attractive? When I saw Officer Jenny, Misty, and Nurse Joy, yes. That is normal Ash. You are noticing women in a different life, is there anything you felt? When I was riding with Jenny, she felt nice a euro, he was blushing just thinking about it. I see. Well Jenny is older than you by 10 years and I could imagine she hardly changed, right? Yes. Don't worry son, that is how I felt when I see women. That is until the right one came along. The only advice I could give you Ash is respect them and compliment them. If you are being with one, just be with them. Okay dad. If something does happen to you, call me up and we will talk more. You have to go now. Unfortunately, I have to head home and the call will lose contact. Okay dad, thanks a lot. Take care. After hanging up, he thought about it and pondered if he might have felt the same way for Serena when he was younger. But then again, it was years ago. He sighed and was ready to continue. He walked toward Route 2 and was enjoying the scenery. He was liking the sun that was still out in the fresh air, until he heard another rustling. He looked at his left and saw a male knitter and coming out. Ash smirked and said, perfect, Pikachu, ready. Pikachu nodded, Pika. All right Pikachu, do with quick attack. Pikachu was going right at him very fast and tackled him. Nidoran stood back after the attack and shot one of his pins right at the mouse Pokemon. Barely avoided, he was ready to dish out another attack. Quick Pikachu, thunder shock. Pikachu, the electric shock managed to hit Nidoran and was hit hard, weakening and losing conscious. He tried to move but felt paralyzed. Then he felt a hit into his side and knew he was finished. Ash waited for the Pokeball for it to stop to move. 
After it stopped Ash went over and picked up the Pokeball, great job Pikachu. Pika. Suddenly someone said, hey how about a battle? Ash turned around and it was young teenager who took out his only Pokeball. Alright you're on, Pikachu rest up. Pikachu returned to his side. Let's go Rattata. He saw the familiar rat Pokemon, but something was off about how tough it looks. He looks a little bigger than the others and the teeth looks thicker. He decided to gamble off with a Pokemon he would use. Go Spiro. The bird Pokemon was flying and looked at his opponent. Something was off about him, but knew that he had to fight him off. Alright Spiro, let's begin to a leer. The Pokemon gave a hard glare that did lower his guard. Alright Rattata, use quick attack. With a speed like no other he managed to hit Spiro hard. Spiro, are you alright? The bird Pokemon nodded. Alright Spiro, one more leer. The Pokemon glared at him one last time and the defense went lower. Alright time to go for another quick attack. The Rattata was running at him. Quick, head to the air. The bird Pokemon flew as high as he could and managed to dodge it. You think it can stay up there? No just to do this, quick a peck attack. The Pokemon managed to dive bomb with a harsh peck attack. It did some damage, but not enough. Not impressive, go for a hard tackle. The rat Pokemon managed to hit him hard sending the bird Pokemon taking him out. Return Spiro, you did your job. The trainer with arrogance said, is that it? No, watch this, let's Pikachu. Pika, the Pokemon was in his fighting stance. Okay then, Rattata go for a quick attack. As the Pokemon was getting close, Ash shouted, Thunder shock yourself Pikachu. Without hesitating, he shocked himself as the Rattatat felt the jolts of electricity coursing to his body and this weakened him. Ah come on, go for a tackle. He wasn't able to move, he was paralyzed. Alright, finish it with Iron Tail. Pika. Pikachu went running at him and managed to take out the Pokemon. The trainer was in shock. That's impossible, they told me the synthetic should outmuscle any Pokemon. Synthetic. The trainer returned his Pokemon and left without saying a word. Ash then felt a vibrating noise on his hip and looked at his Pokédex, he won 500 credits. He petted Pikachu and pondered about how many tough trainers have synthetic and what will he do about it. After Ash recovered his Poke Copyright Mon and managed to buy more supplies for his journey. Once he was set, he checked out his Pokédex about his Nidoran. Name. Nidoran. Gender. Male. Poka copyright mon type. Poison pin. Summary. It is small, but its horn is filled with poison. It charges then stabs with the horn to inject poison. Fighting moves. Scratch, poison pin, and growl. Ash smiled that he caught a Nidoran, and by training him right he could have a versatile Poka copyright mon. He walked onto Route 2 for some time, when he saw a sign post that says, Entering Viridian Forest, go with extreme caution. Of course Ash was known to being careful and able to deal with anything that he faces. In his coma, he caught both a Caterpie and Pidgeotto, he also faced a very strange samurai with a tough pincer and a Metapod. He snorted over how ridiculous the fight was between his Metapod and his own. He began to make sure he trained his Metapod to do more than that. As he walked on as the sun was setting, he spotted a Caterpie. He smiled to himself and was ready to test Nidoran. Alright Nidoran, let's go. The rabbit light Poka copyright Mon looked at his opponent to fight. Alright Nidoran, use poison pin. Nidoran. Nidoran ran right at him with his pointed pin and hits Caterpie on the side. The Poka copyright Mon screamed with pain and was ready for a fight. She looked at his opponent and began to shoot her web at him. Dodge it. The rabbit Poka copyright Mon began to dodge from his left and nearly escaped when he was caught on his foot. Use tackle, Nidoran. Nido. He charged at her and tackled her hard, sending the Poka copyright Mon flying. She was hit in a tree and was losing conscious. She felt a side on her being hit softly, knowing she was caught. He waited the first shake, the second, and the last one finally caught a Caterpie. Great job, Nidoran. He carefully petted the rabbit Poka copyright Mon and was happy. He checked his Pokédex to find out details of Caterpie. Name. Caterpie. Gender. 
Female. Polka copyright mon type. Worm polka copyright mon. Summary. For protection, it releases a horrible stench from the antennae on its head to drive away enemies. Fighting moves. Tackle. String shot. He caught another polka copyright mon and a familiar one. He noticed that the sun was gone and the forest was darker than its usual self. He placed his sleeping back to the side and began to make a small fire between some sage brush, twigs and stones. Once the fire began he released all of his polka copyright mon and they began to chatter one another. Ash then began to see how different this time around was, his polka copyright mon and the bond. Well guys and gals, I will make dinner and hope that you guys are prepared to go through this forest. We will face trainers and polka copyright mon alike. They nodded in agreement. As he cooked on, the caterpie went to the nidoran and was blushing slightly. She cuddled near it as the nidoran didn't mind the affection, just it was strange for the bug type to be with a different creature. Mankey was talking to Spiro about a few things along with Pikachu. It seems that they are talking about their trainer and what they have done beforehand. Dinner is ready. They went toward the different bowls as each of them were eating. Ash was eating his food as Pikachu stayed close to his trainer as he was eating his meal. He just didn't want anything bad happening to his trainer again, even in this forest. Ash noticed his Pikachu's caution posture. He realized that his polka copyright mon was being edgy of something bad will happen to him as their guard was done. He petted his Pikachu and said, Don't worry, buddy. Nothing will happen to us. Trust me. Pikachu smiled at his trainer and was calming down a bit. He suddenly saw his trainer standing up and spraying around the area he was resting. He was glad that he bought a repel to keep Polka Copyright Mon away from him and his Polka Copyright Mon. He finished his cannon once all of the Polka Copyright Mon finished, he returned his Polka Copyright Mon. He went into his sleeping bag, along with his Pikachu and they slept. Next morning, Ash was already up and was walking in a man-made dirt road. He looked around for anything interesting, when he found a potion on the ground. It was still full. He quirked his eyebrow and then someone said, Hey you, how about we battle? A young man with a white beater shirt and blue shorts, carrying a bug net. Ash smirked, you're on. They took their position ready for the fight. Let's go Weedle. A worm polka copyright mon with a sharp needle point at his head was ready to fight. Let's Caterpie. The Caterpie, after recuperating from the last fight from yesterday, looked strong and was ready to fight. Alright Weedle, give him a poison sting. The polka copyright mon went at her. Quick, string shot at the tree and swing yourself up in those trees. She obeyed and swung to get away from the attack just in time. You think that will slow me down. Weedle, string shot yourself to the trees and follow that Caterpie. He did so, when Ash said. Quick tackle attack. As she swung, she used her momentum to hit with a hard tackle at the unsuspecting polka copyright mon sending it flying and hitting on a tree. Weedle, are you alright? Weedle shook his head and was ready to fight some more. He noticed how Caterpie landed on the ground. Alright string shot at that Caterpie. Quick string shot around you. As Weedle used string shot, Caterpie was able to string shot around herself, thus negating the attack. All right Caterpie used that string shot and tie Weedle up. She used the momentum from her counter and was able to tie up Weedle. Oh crud. Now tackle hard. She went running as fast as she could and managed to tackle the Pokemon hard. Weedle was barely getting up from the attack, when another tackle put the Weedle down and out of the fight. Drat. Return Weedle. Good job Caterpie. She smiled in joy she won a fight when she slowly was glowing and began to evolve in his eyes. Once the glowing was over, what stood from a Caterpie was a green cocoon. Metapod, Metapod. He took out his Pokédex. Name, Metapod. Gender, Female. Type Polka Copyright Mon, Cocoon. Summary. It prepares for evolution by hardening its shell as much as possible to protect its soft body. Fighting moves. Tackle, string shot, harden. Then the trainer said, it's not over, you still have to take out my last polka copyright mon. He took out his pokeball. Let's go, Metapod. Outstood an equal cocoon polka copyright mon. Return Metapod. 
She returned to his Pokeball and took out another Poke Copyright Mon. He wasn't going to do another Harden vs. Harden again. Go Spiro. The Bird Poke Copyright Mon looked at his opponent with a dark grin. To him, it would have been lunch, but this was a battle. No matter, Metapod use Harden. The Poke Copyright Mon glowed briefly then it stopped. Spiro, Peck Attack. The attack had a strong effect once the hit brought Metapod on its knees. He was out before anything else, indicating from the swirls in his eyes. The trainer sighed and knew he was already screwed. He was sure that Metapod was strong enough to hold the attack, but remembered that Spiro's peck was still super effective. Thanks for the fight, trainer. It has been a while since I was tested to keep up. Ash smiled, same with you. I just couldn't go for the long run against Metapod. Understandable. Do you know a way about this place? The bug trainer was in thought and replied, keep following the road until you reach a fork. Take the left one and keep going straight. Once you reach to AT section take a right and you should be out of here in no time. Thanks. Take care now. He nodded and they parted ways. Sometime lotter a euro. Ash was following the trail and did saw the fork road. He took the left and kept walking. He was happy for his two victories, but knew he couldn't get cocky. Considering that trainers make mistakes for that. He hoped to find more trainers, but they seemed to be much deeper in the forest. He saw the T section and made a right. He was walking and noticed how it was clearing Upa Euro. Hold it there trainer. He looked to his left and noticed another trainer wearing near a protective B suit, minus the helmet. How about we have a battle? Ash nodded. He prepared himself, when the trainer said, let's have this as a handicap fight. You use two strong Poka copyright mon, while I use one. He raised his eyebrow, pondering, why only one? Surely it would be a tag, unless he was confident with his Poka copyright mon. All right, your choice. Good, let's go Beedrill. Out came the last evolved form of Weedle. Unlike any Beedrill, this one looked stronger. Ash suspected another synthetic user. All right then, let's Metapod and Nidoran. Both Pokemon took its stand, ready to fight. Okay then. Beedrill, use Twin Needle on both of them. He was coming toward them fast. Metapod stand your ground with Harden. Nidoran, stay in place while having Poison Sting out. Both Poka Copyright Mon stood in place and were bracing for impact. Both felt a hard hit from the B Poka Copyright Mon as they held on the onslaught. Alright, Metapod Harden and tackle. Nidoran, growl and scratch. Metapod glowed once more and tackled hard against the Poka Copyright Mon. While he was flown mid-air, he felt his power go down from a strong growl and a hard scratch. Beedrill got up after falling down, and was ready for more of a fight. Crud, he's tough. No matter. Ash thought. As you can see, you have to do better than that, city boy. The trainer smirked, how about another twin needle, Beedrill? He went to another attack. Ash noticed that Nidoran was still exhausted from holding on, while Metapod did look beat up. Metapod, string shot Nidoran in a tree. Then swing both of yourselves out of there. Metapod was determined not to allow to see Nidoran getting hurt badly. She released a web and it on Nidoran's back, then another one on a tree. She flew swung before the attack could hit either of them. She kept swinging while avoiding the Bipoka copyright mon. All right, Metapod tossed Nidoran at Beedrill. She knew it was a risk, but she did so as she was told. She threw him hard. Beedrill, attack that Nidoran. Nidoran latch onto him. As he was being pummeled by the Beedrill with the twin needle, he was hanging out. Nidoran, use poison sting non-stop. He kept hitting the Poka copyright mon with everything he got. He was slowly losing conscious and when he noticed that it was slowly affecting the bug Poka copyright mon, he had him. He lost conscious. Metapod saw her darling was out of the fight. She was angry. She wanted to make him pay. The Beedrill taunted over the rabbit Poka copyright mon. String shot at Beedrill. Without hesitation, she string shot the bug Poka copyright mon until he was tied up. Get yourself out of there and attack that Poka copyright mon. Quick, harden and tackle. She did so fast before the other Poka copyright mon could react. She sent the Poka copyright mon flying right at a tree. 
The Beedrill was trying to get up, when he felt another tackle. He was losing conscious as it felt one more tackle attack, along the poison effect that coursed his body, which knocked him out. The trainer was in shock. He lost. He hasn't lost in years. He was very confident that the synthetic would be enough to take out any Poka copyright mon in its way. In anger, he returned his Poka copyright mon and left running elsewhere. Ash was surprised he won, as he noticed that his Metapod was evolving already. He pondered what level she was. She lost the cocoon look and with it came a large purple butterfly. He smiled and took out his Pokédex. Name, Butterfree. Gender, Female. Poka copyright mon type, Butterfly. Summary, it collects honey every day. It rubs honey onto the hairs on its legs to carry it back to its nest. Fighting moves, 